Church on behalf of the KJV, Amen. Amen. my good news from modern men on the NIV, and the King James Bible that has been given to me. That's right. Amen. I see my God in the Bible wherever I chance to look. I see my God in the Bible, the heart, the theme of the book. He's the rose of Sharon and the lily fair. Amen. We have opened the Bible, the God of the Bible is there. God wrote one book. God has one plan to get to heaven. That's right. God has one son, Jesus, our way to heaven. God has one plan for marriage, one plan for woman, one plan for man, That's right. one plan for the family. Amen. Amen. Somehow God allowed myself to come together with Brother Sean. I'm not sure how that happened. I've been here 30 years. I started this church in a red barn down the road, and, and uh, one thing led to another. I, I, uh, anyway, and I've now been on this property, I guess, 15 or 20 years. I lived in this house up here. My mother got breast cancer. She moved into that house with my father. My father got saved. I baptized. He became a deacon. He lived for God the last three years of his life. Amen. He got my dad laid in the casket right here, and I preached his funeral. My brother came to that funeral. Rachel Sandy got saved at my daddy's funeral. Amen. Amen. My whole life had been nothing but soul winning. Amen. Uh, Amen. From the night I got, Jesus came to seek and to save right. that right. which right. was lost. Amen. Amen. Um, I fear our churches are caught up in everything but soul winning. Amen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everything but keeping somebody out of hell. That's right. Right. a motto. Amen. If you win souls as you go, you never have to go soul winning. Right. Amen. That's Should right. Repeat that? If you yeah. win souls as you go, you never have to go soul winning. Amen. You win them at the store. You win them at the post office. You win them door to door. You win them downtown. You win them next door. Wherever you meet people, they need to be saved. Amen. Everybody needs a Savior, and you and I have the answer. Right. That's right. And God That's right. forbid that we would not give that Amen. answer out. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Amen. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to a fair place for you, and if I go, I will come again. And he is coming again to receive us unto himself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And Amen. i got to tell you this. Amen. Wherever Jesus is, if you're with him, that will be a little touch of heaven. Amen. 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 We have preached, in our place here, we've preached to 35,000 inmates in the last 30 years. Camp 13, Camp 27, <laughs> the local jail, and Riverside. Tomorrow morning, I'll probably have three inmates that have gotten saved out of that 30, that have gotten saved and appear at church. So I'm not looking for church members. Amen. That's up to God. Right. Amen. Yes. Because it's not my church, this is God's Amen. church. Amen. 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 God never called me to build a church. God called me to go soul winning. Right. He'll build the church. That's right. That's right. I, I can run them off as fast as I can bring them in. Amen. 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 Right. 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 Let, let, me, let me give you a, a quick Bible lesson. I'm going to read some scripture to you. Uh, I'm glad God gave us a Bible. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says, brethren, by the way, everybody's not your brother. That's right. That's right. right. Everybody's yeah. not your friend. That's right. A yeah. man that has friends must show himself friendly. That's right. And there is a friend that's closer than a brother. Amen. Everybody thought you were acquainted. But everybody needs to be saved. That's right. That's right. Everybody you meet, every Mormon, Jehovah Witness, Catholic, Muslim, Red, yellow, black, white, they need a savior. Amen. 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 If we don't give it, if we don't take it and give it to them, they'll die and go to hell, right. and their blood will be on our hands. That's right. That's right. By the way, if you read that text in Ezekiel, that's that's a warning text, not a winning text. That's it is right. our job to warn them, and if God moves, we can win them to him. That's Amen. Right. Right. Anyway, I met Sean, it seems like yesterday. And so I said, how'd you find out about me? I think you said a website. But we are an independent, fundamental, old-fashioned, window-shaking, shingle-rattling, sinner-loving, sin-hating, old-fashioned Baptist church. Amen. And we Amen. up immediately together. You're talking about the marathon? By the way, I made that decision. Nobody else does. But I didn't know all of that it encompassed. I didn't know you were coming from Canada. And I didn't know you were... <laughs> I didn't know you were hooked on soul winning. <laughs> and I didn't know y'all were coming from other states. I just knew that soul winning marathon meant something to me. We've had several of them here. The last one we had, just in our church alone, we had 125 people say. Amen. Amen. Praise we God. We scattered abroad, door to door, house to house. Amen. We went to nursing home, we went to the jail, we went, we went to a uh, shopping center, door to door, bus routes, getting folks saved. Amen. Amen. And that's what we ought to do. Amen. We ought to do that's that. That's right. I, uh, and then that's so Sean and I met, or like, I know you got this on, on video or something, Sean, but I want to give an apology, but I've known it was like this 
I'd have prepared a meal for us this evening. I'd have got some for us to eat and drink and fellowship more. I didn't know it'd be quite like this. My fault. He said, go on the internet. I can't do that. By the way, a dangerous thing for most men. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you got to be very careful what you're searching. You oh, yeah. Be very careful what you're running down. Be very, uh, uh, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your thoughts ought to be pure. Mm -hmm. Clean, That's right. decent, and godly. Right. He quoted Psalms 1. Blessed man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. You don't know it, but you walk through Walmart, they're playing music, you're getting counsel of the ungodly. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. you, That's you, right. You talk to one of your friends, a co worker who's unsaved, you're getting counsel. So be very careful. Hey, it should go in here and out here. Somebody say amen. Amen. Like amen. What the preacher does in most churches. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Anyhow. That's fine. Uh, Sean, this morning I went to Panera Bread. I went to the wrong one. I left all my information here. I got in the car, went to Panera Bread. I was at Courthouse Road and, and uh, Midlothian Boulevard. Y'all were down by Chippingham. I waited. Imagine there's nobody coming here for a church meeting. I said, I think they are. But then, so I come to the church. I called Sean, found out where you were. Went soul winning. We had, I think, 12 or 13 was here this morning to go soul winning. And we had seven saved today. Praise, and, praise the Lord. Him. They reported back in to me. Then I picked up my grandson, went back to my house. Came back with two more, because him and I are going to go bike riding before it gets dark tonight. If we don't, that'll be cool too. But anyway, uh, I, I, I didn't realize, Sean, how important this was to you and all the people that are doing this today. But I do know this, it's important to Jesus. Amen. That's, that's right. What folks say that's why he came that's right. and Amen. why he died. Amen. That's right. Every Thursday, I'm, I'll be 65 my next birthday. I've been preaching on the street for 40 years. But 30 years right here downtown Richmond. We had four saved last Thursday. Amen. We started at 6th Street Marketplace for 10 years. Fourth, fourth and Broad for about 11 or 12 years. The last and the biggest crowd we can find is at, at Richmond Courthouse. Right in the middle of the police department. The, the courthouse where all the courts are held. It's a huge flag there. I pull up to the John Marshall house. I hop out and get on top of them steps and I start preaching. Hello, my name is Ron Tally. I'm here to preach the gospel. To they let you know that somebody, somebody, uh, some having compassion, making a difference. Let me tell you, right. and compassion is an action word. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love you, but never give you no money. Right. Yeah. Matter of fact, I don't even know him. I just met him, but I knew he was going to get somebody saved. I, well, did we give you some money? Yes, sir. I don't know who he gave him. I, was, I, just, I just initiated it. They went and got something and gave it to him. To help on his trip to Africa to get people saved. Amen. And he kept, right. and by the way, these folks were checking up on you, what they were sending back. They were telling me, because I don't do email very well, Gmails at all. I can barely text. Uh, my hair is white and I'm almost blind. The days of my youth are far behind. And they just took thanks be to God, I can still talk. Amen. Yes. This is Thank you, Lord. You to get. I'm still kicking. I'm not dead yet. I love to go to church and Sunday school too. And hear the word of God that's ever so true. King James. Hear the word of God that's ever so true. That's right. Amen. When I come to the end of my road to my heavenly home, I'll go. When I leave this old body of clay, you listen close, you'll hear me say, this is the best I want you to get. I've just moved on. I'm not dead yet. Amen. 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 I love church. That's right. Uh, and, and seven years ago, I decided to get somebody saved every day for six weeks in a six-week program. And I did. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And door to door, house to house, apartment complex, everywhere I went, getting somebody saved. By the way, I've been to the midnight hour, snowstorm night, at the Wawa, trying to get somebody saved, giving out Bible tracts, but I couldn't find anybody wanting to get saved. Pushed to the very limit. And then about three years ago, I included my church. So if we get somebody saved at church, or I get somebody saved here on Sunday, I count that and let my church come involved with me. But seven years now. Every day. And by the way, that's not a record. That's not to brag on. That's why Jesus came. Amen. That's right. Any preacher don't win souls ought to go, fight, ought to go sell a used car. That's right. That's right. I wouldn't that's have right. a preacher that didn't beat the Bible, the King James. I wouldn't have a preacher that wouldn't go soul winning. Amen. That, yeah. that wouldn't love the unlovely. Preaching. Care for dying and rescue the perishing. I wouldn't have him. Right. Amen. Amen. He's, he's lazy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I tell you what they do, they get their chairs wore out, not their shoes wore out. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly that's right. right. Yeah. My full pad do what I want to do, amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> anyway, brother, I like I like I like being so winning addicted. I'm yeah. A saved person ought to be. Right. I can't that's imagine right. Christ moving in and not telling somebody about it. That's yes. right. Uh, I got saved May 1973. Eleven months later I was at Bible college. 
Five months later, I was working full time for God, and I've been pastoring here 30 years. A man at the ballpark said, You must really love God. I said, Yeah, I moved to his house. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Amen. I've been going to the Veterans Building once a week, so, at the McGuire Hospital, the large one on the Eastern Seaboard, sold winning every week. The church has been buying me handkerchiefs, those bandanas, red and blue ones. And I've been going down and giving them away. And now, you know, we've been winning them veterans to Jesus. Amen. The ones who help us have our freedom. Amen. Amen. I can't get into a political realm that wouldn't be right. And you're tired and I'm tired. Nobody deserves three or four preachers at one time. And four days so <laughs> winning. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to read some text to you and give you a story that God gave me to help you tonight. The Bible says this. In, in uh, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, not a sin, but a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one and spirit of meekness. Hard thing to do because we think we're spiritual and we're not. Wow. Uh, end up being Pharisees, so I have to be very careful. Mm. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Mm. But let every man prove his own work. Yeah. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. But to a man soweth that shall he also reap. He that soweth the flesh, and the flesh shall reap corruption. He that soweth the spirit, and the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You find a lot of folks weary and well doing. You can look at me just a minute. I'll give you an illustration compared to the cause of Christ. I was meeting the veterans at the veterans building at McGuire Hospital. And now I had a man work for ESP and Bassmasters. He'd give me boxes of Bassmasters hats. And I've been taking them to McGuire, giving them out to the veterans, and giving them a Bible track and tell them, not only am I glad for my freedom, but I'd like to tell you about Jesus and give you a free gift. Been doing it every week now. It's working out very well. I talked to a man. He was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. And if you read it, there were 40,000 helicopter pilots, 40,000 plus helicopters in Vietnam. Wow. They had a, what they called an MOS. That's what their, their, their job is in the military. Some are machinists. Some are welders. Some are gunners. An MOS. The MOS for a helicopter pilot in Vietnam, lasting, it lasted four weeks, was an average lengthened before they were killed. Mm. So when you roll them to Vietnam, they say, what's your MOS? They'd say, I'm a helicopter pilot. They said, oh, four weeks, you'll be dead. That was a common joke in Vietnam. Wow. I pulled it up, Sean, brother, on, I Googled it, and that, this man was telling me this. He, but he managed to go through his two tours of a, a helicopter pilot, picking up wounded soldiers, taking in, uh, they have a name for that, uh, calling like, uh, they would, they would take them in, drop them off, pick them up, bring them back to their base. And anyway, and every, everybody was trying to shoot down the helicopter fighters. They, they got where they invented a seat, uh, a, a uh, titanium thing went around the helicopter pilot. They ran his seat, ran his back, so when they shot underneath, they would deflect the bullets and not kill him. He's uh, up in his 80s, near 90, and I was visiting with him, thanking him. Yeah, I was sitting down at McGuire. And I said to him, I said, sir, what was your scariest time in Vietnam? Was it when they shot ground-to-air missiles? When they were shooting at you from the ground? When you landed in a... And, and he said they had invented... They, 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 they invented something that you could tie to the propellers. That whenever they would come down, they would hit the trees and cut them. They could land. He said the soldiers were in such a hurry to get out of there under fire. They would take plastic explosives, blow the trees out. They would make a landing pad about the size of a postage stamp. For a Huey helicopter to get in there, they would all bail in, and they would get out, and he would fly them out. I said, was it landing, flying, coming? What was your scariest time? He said, I was never really scared like that. I can give you my worst time. I said, what was your worst time? He said, I would land to pick up soldiers that were under fire. I could pick up 14, and there were 30 waiting on me. Oh, no. And I left 16 behind. And some of them, I never got back to go get them. And I still, he said, I'm an old man now. And I wonder if they ever made it out of Vietnam. So I was shot down twice. I know I didn't get back then. But he said they would hang on to the skids till the helicopter wouldn't leave the ground, begging me to take them with them. And I couldn't. I said, if you don't let go, I can't get out of here. 
and said the guys are inside are yelling at him, get off the helicopter, get off the helicopter. They were fighting to get in. He said he would fight a helicopter out and he would look back and see all the men under fire that he couldn't carry with him. But let me tell you something. One day we're going to get to heaven and we're going to look back and see people we could have won to Christ that we That's didn't. Right. Amen. And we should have won them. Amen. We were too tired. Amen. We were too lazy. Yeah. We were too busy making money. Right. And we're going to leave them behind. Yeah. And we're going to do our best to get folks saved. And, and don't look. Satan arrived in the garden attacking the word of God. He found out it worked and he's never stopped doing that. That's right. It was a good plan for him to ruin the church. But the word of God said we ought to do all that we can to get folks saved. Amen. Well, reap what we sow. There's a second group we'll leave behind. How long have you been doing this, brother? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. I hope when you're 64 you're still doing it. What to God. Everywhere you go, they're going to discourage you. You don't meet many men like this. You know, you know my old church, I quit asking, how anybody get saved today? I got two teenage boys now I'm, I'm mentoring. Last Wednesday, myself, two teenage boys and one daddy, had 19 people saved, 17 Amen. people saved last Wednesday. Amen. Praise God. And uh, these boys are 12 years old. And I've been mentoring them. And Amen. now every day it takes a preacher to get somebody saved today. Preacher, I'm praying for you today. These two boys. Amen. Most folks ain't got used to it. Anyway, I say this to you. Look, you ought to look out for each other. Don't, don't. My brother falls. You ought to try and pick him up. That's right. mm -hmm. You ought to try and love him. You don't got to go sit down to the bar with him. You're not the chaplain of Bourbon Street. You ought to let him know who he is, uh, uh, Bob Harrington. But you ought to, you ought to, you ought to, pick, you ought to encourage each other. I knew. I, I had never met Sean in my whole life. But I knew he was trying. He hadn't, met, he hadn't been saved very long, three or four years, I think. But I wanted to love him and encourage him. Amen. Amen. I said, how do you do what you do? How do you do this right here? You run on the website, you meet some in a restaurant, then you go in that neighborhood, my neighborhood, so many. And nobody really cares if you do it or not, except the folks that got saved. Today. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. My mother died at 72, my dad died at 71. This year, this year, in the last seven months, I buried my two sisters, both of them. <coughs> They're caskets. Both of them died, one of breast cancer, one of ovarian cancer. Both my, two of my sisters. My baby sister lived in that house up there. And she's about six. They were both were under 70. So it looks like I'm not, I, if God lets me live like my mother's or my sisters, I got about six, seven more years left. But I better do all I can for Christ. Amen. Amen. I better leave nobody behind. Amen. No stone unturned. That's right. No sermon unpreached. Right. Nobody unreached. Amen. No track not given out. Amen. Because Amen. I'm scared. Or because I, I might mess up. Hey, if you mess up, nobody knows. Right. Press on the upward way. Know what you're gaining every day. Amen. 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 Don't quit. Amen. Love each other. We are famous. We are famous for somebody falling. <coughs> we step over them on our way up because we think we're better than them. Yeah. Preachers fall. Christians fall. Yeah. They all struggle. Yeah. But we'll not leave a brother behind because nobody loved him or encouraged him or nobody cared. You know what David said? No man cared for my soul. A good man. <coughs> we want to make sure that we look out for each other, encourage each other, contact each other. You're from different states, different cities, different backgrounds. I just met Tony. He don't like Anthony. I found that out. He wants to be called Tony. Good preacher. <laughs> just baptized three, three people tonight. You know that? Do you know there? There'll be six, seven thousand. Southern Baptist Church of this year, they won't baptize anybody. Yeah. Hey, PB, I'll be right with you. Won't baptize anybody. We baptize almost every week here. Praise God. I, I preach all over the country. I preach in Austin, Texas, Hammond, Indiana. I preach in Tallahassee, Florida. I preach in Tampa, Florida. You know, most churches I preach in, they got, they got songbooks in the baptistry. <laughs> they got last week's flowers in the baptistry. No water, no robes, no towels, no soul winning. My four, no more. They're not fishers of men. They're keepers of the aquarium. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They never get out and tell nobody about you. Never preach on the street. I had a man come preach for me. His car broke down. And so I had his car to shop fixing it. And I said, hey, brother, Thursday, we're going to go street preaching. He said, no, I'm not going. That's a young man's game. I was, I was eating in Thomasville, Georgia at a revival meeting. And I was sitting down at a Ryan Steakhouse. 
And the preacher said to me, he said, Tally, do you really preach? I'm, I'm, I'll close it, Sean. No, 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 you're good, Pastor. I, I, I said, yes, sir. I said, I preach on the street every week, anywhere, anytime. And he said, no, he said, well, hey, okay. I said, I'll tell you what, I preach right here, Ryan Steakhouse, preaching even with me. <laughs> he said, no, 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 I, these folks know me. Then I knew he was embarrassed. <laughs> no, a street preacher. Now, I said, no, I, I said, they were having a big business meeting and at, 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 uh, they have a banker at Ryan Steakhouse, Thomasville, Georgia, Rose City Christian School. And I said, look, when they get all settled down, I'm going to throw a fit on the floor. When I get ready, I'm going to get up and give my testimony about being a child of God and get a plan of salvation. Amen. He said, no, don't, don't do that, preacher. I said, yeah, I'm going to do it right here. Here we go. Y'all ready? I'm gonna go. Hey, here we go. He left his steak. Potato and a salad and went home and left me in a restaurant. What'd you do? I ate my steak, ate my potato, ate my salad, and took his steak and his potato and home to my dog. My dog came, came, came. Amen. Amen. My favorite pet, my most loyal pet. I said, well, I got some for you tonight. I gave him that steak, that uh, uh, T-bone on the bone. This is a story. I come through a town, on the way through a town. They were buying hunting license. 75 men in line getting hunting license. I stopped, gave everybody a Bible track in line. I got on top of my car and said, look at me right now. There's just a Bible track tell you how to get to heaven. All that sin come toward the glory of God. Way to sin is death. Amen. This man rolled up and said, sir, I don't know what you're doing, but the police are on their way. <laughs> got my car and left. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I preached in that town, at a pastor's fellowship. 40 preachers came. I was the opening pastor. I got up and I said to the pastor in that town, I said, hey, brother, I preached in your town last week getting hunt licenses. I told all the folks downtown, I was from your church, and I was one of your preacher boys. <laughs> <laughs> the next Monday morning, I got the radio and said, folks, that man preaching downtown, he won't from my church. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was ashamed of a street preaching, so when he oh. Bible thumped and give out Bible tracts every day of his life, he was ashamed. That's why we're living in the world and want to do our best to encourage each other and love each other and then leave nobody. You're not going to win everybody. That's right. But there'll be somebody, brother, you can win that I won't win. Yeah. Probably right. unless God sends me out there. I'm never going to Ontario, Canada. They'll need you. And where were you from, brother? They'll need you. And where are you from, brother? They'll need you. And they'll need you, Tony. Where y'all go, I probably won't go. And where I go, you probably won't go. Probably won't go to Riverside Jail preaching next week or downtown Richmond preaching next week or to McGuire giving out Bible tracts. Everywhere we go, look, look. I don't know how to walk through the malls. I don't do I hate. I can't stand the mall. Yeah. Look at all those people dying and going to hell, and nobody cares. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. You ride down the street, every car you pass, somebody's dying and going to hell. Yeah, right. Look at every ball game you watch in the Atlanta Braves, or you watch the watch the Nationals. All thirty-five thousand people have no time for God. Most of them lost. Right. God yeah. Will call us home one day, and they're all going to be left behind. Yeah. But nobody cared for their soul. God has done something great in your life. Some reason with Sean, probably 2018, where there is no vision, people perish. Either right, keep the law right. happy you see. Yeah. Through, through this man's vision, you have gathered up. Matter of fact, this, this brother and I, known each other five, six, seven years. And he, he texts me, I don't know, he may email me, and I tried to email him back, I don't think we ever got together, but he tried. <laughs> Finally face to face, you know what my, my folks do? By the way, preach, we're going to be there tomorrow. But come see me face to face and tell me that. Don't send it to my telephone. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got face to face again, but God's touched, touched him and married him and changed his life. We've been, we've been, we've been together now for seven years. Amen. I'd say to you today, keep up the good work. Don't quit. Help each other. Be careful. Everything. I got to tell you, the marathon goes on tomorrow. That's right. Monday, I'll get up. I'll get up early Monday morning. I'll come here and I'll clean the church Monday morning. I ain't all the trash cans. I clean all the toilet myself, by myself. Now, I come in here and I reflect tomorrow's service. I, I by myself in my church. I walk with God Monday morning. But Sam, before I go to bed Monday night, I'll go out and get some Bible tracks out, knock on the doors, and I'll get somebody saved. Amen. Amen. I go to bed Monday night. Amen. Amen. Tuesday morning, I get up and do the same thing. And Wednesday morning, the same thing. It never stops. That's right. <laughs> One day I'm going to stand before God. I'm going to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's right. If I've been a good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. And Amen. I want to be. Amen. If that helicopter pilot feels like that about leaving me in the jungle, That's right. 
How do we feel about leaving men in the jungle of lost, Amen. dying, and going to hell? Amen. Sir, right. Where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Right. And you and I, we know the bridge is out. And we have the answer. Amen. Let us keep doing what we are doing. Let us keep loving like, like we love. Let us keep giving out the gospel like we ought to. That's right. Yeah. Love it like we should. I'm glad I got to be part of this. If we do it again, we'll do it different next time. Amen. I'll bring you a crowd out. <laughs> we'll have us a meal. We we'll do it, it all again. right here. Yes, sir. We'll meet here and have breakfast. We'll meet here and have lunch. We'll meet here and have supper and shout it out. And I'll be glad to help you out, brother. Amen. And uh, we'll have a good time. Get a couple of your folks saved. Yes, sir. Go door to door. Amen. 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 I, I admire what Sean does. Amen. Amen. He works a full-time yep. job, takes care of his family. Amen. He's been coming up here several weeks now going to church from Williamsburg. I ain't sure I'll drive that far to go to church to hear me preach. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, y'all, keep on the firing line. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this today. And for allowing me, I, 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 I'm very honored. Where do you go from here, Sean? Going to Chipotle to have some dinner, Pastor. Okay. You're invited if you want to come All on. right. All right. That'd be great, brother. You want me to have a word of prayer? Yes, sir. I enjoy meeting y'all. It's you been a real honor too, sir. and a real pleasure. Thank you for having us, Pastor. That is my yes. honor. Thank you, Pastor. It's my honor. Amen. I had... I didn't know that no. you know, since many so ones in the world from around here that would come out yeah. and do this for the cause of Christ. Bring your children, load up your wives and friends, bring your buddy with you. They did they did me like that. I was what I want I got say. They looked out for me. I got my hair cut, got me a King James Bible, <laughs> went to church. I worked in a steel mill. I was a machinist apprentice in a steel mill. I wanted I, I got my Bible carrier to work with me. And every day at lunchtime I read my Bible. Every day at lunchtime, I sat down. I sat down with a man who couldn't read or write. Pulled his Bible out at lunch table, like just right here. Every day at lunch, and couldn't read. I said, I said to him, why do you do that? And he said, I want them folks to know that I'm a Christian. Right, man. Like, yeah. we, got, we got it on 8-track. No, we got it on cassette tape for it. Got a little cassette player, put the Word of God on there for it. And somebody, some young men looked out for me the year I got saved. I never forgot it. We want to make sure we look out for each other. Leave no man behind that needs our love and our help. Amen. And then when everybody that we can win and nobody left behind, make a difference in somebody's life. Amen. 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 Father, Amen. these are good people. A room full of soul winners. What a rare thing. I pray, God, you will touch them. I pray, God, you will bless them and keep them safe. Help us to fight the good fight of faith, to arm ourselves with the armor of God. Pick up the word of God. Like go out telling somebody about Jesus. Like that, I pray God should lay your hand on Brother Sean. Continue loving him and leading him and guiding him. And I pray God he'll, he'll stay tender and a man of visionary to get the work done for Christ. I pray God just folks have a good supper and that they'll get to there where they're going to go safe and sound. And they'll be blessed on their way home. Take care of these children, the next generation. May we be ever so careful. What we expose our children to. I pray God you'll bless us real good. We love you, Lord. In thy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for your time. Thank God bless you. Thank you.